All right. So um, what we're going to do now is why what's stopping you, also called ladder of abstraction. And I have a very willing client who, <laughs> who is well fed now and no longer cold. And, uh, and we have a problem statement that could use some redefining. You want to clarify your statement a bit, see if that's well stated. Uh, look for some alternatives. Okay, so why don't you come on up and tell us a little bit about this, and we'll see if the group has any questions. So my problem is how to find a career. Um, some background information is uh, I'm a career studies minor. I'm a major. <laughs> um. <laughs> you were a minor, right? I was, though, she I was, was a minor at the undergraduate. <laughs> so. um, I graduate um, May 2013. Um, I'm taking a year off before going to law school. I want to do family law. Um, undergrad, my major was criminal justice, and I had three minors, leadership, creative studies, and legal studies. Um, my future needs, uh, I want to work with kids, uh, help people solve problems, something to do with law, with the creativity, before I actually like you know get into the whole law thing. Um, and I want to start after I graduate in, in uh, May. And, uh, I'm willing to relocate, and I'm an extrovert. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's my criteria. No. Questions? Mm -hmm. So you're looking for something to do before law school? Yeah. But that can potentially have something to do with law school, or are you open for just? It can have something. Yeah, I'm open. As long as it's not like way off in a whole other direction. <laughs> so you would eventually like to end up in the legal yeah. system? Have you already been accepted to law school that you know you're coming back to or going to a certain area in a year? Nah, no, I just took, I'm just taking a year off to breathe from, you know, college and stuff. So this is just data right now. Just, just data. Haven't even gotten into the why what's stopping you. Right. Any other questions? You also want to continue this career while you're in law school? If it's possible, that'd be great. Okay, see, it's a big open. It's, it's pretty open. We're really at the beginning of the process, and we're looking at problem sensitivity, redefining problems. So we're just looking a little closer at this statement. It's pretty broad. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. So uh, if you'll go ahead and have a seat, and we'll take a look at this. Uh, let me ask you, uh, why do you want to find a career? Well, because, you know, I've been, I received my, my bachelor's and I'm about to see my master's and I'm ready to get out there in the real world. I'm tired of doing these part-time jobs and stuff like that. Okay, so can we put that on a how-to? Sure. How to get out uh, there in the real world to, or what? Yeah, get a job in the real world. <laughs> so notice she asked why, took the answer, and then rephrased it as a how-to question. Why else? <clears throat> Do you want to find a career? Um, for experience, can you put that in the how to, to gain experience? Um. Why else do you want to find a career? Because that's the whole reason I went to college. Was the <laughs> <laughs> sounds obvious, doesn't it? <laughs> so can we put that in the how to? And you can always have your your colleagues help. I'm just having you do this right now, but they can help phrase it if you need it. Um. How to use my six years of college, or I don't know. Yeah. 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 Why else do you want to find a career? Money, and yeah. financially yeah. stable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you what. Why don't you get your post-its <laughs> and let's generate a few more for her. So the question asked is, why do you want to find a career, or why else? Do you want to find a career? And if you would state it with a invitational stem at the beginning, how to, how might I, in what ways might I? How to be more financially stable. So it started with the client first to model it, then opened it. For law school, how to obtain health insurance, how to earn money, how to encourage self-growth, how to feel more confident, how to trained group. Very fluent. So again, why what's stopping you? A divergent tool really helps around formulating challenges. How to visit cities you want to live in. Uh, how to make salary. 
how to travel more. Using a process, buddy. Pay back student loans. Is this a couple more? Research jobs. Checked in with client. How to get more experience toward uh, the <coughs> law area. How to plan for my long-term goals. How to explore future jobs after law school. Okay, last ones. How to gain experience that sets you up to be a lawyer. Does this give you some alternative ways to look at that yes. issue? How to find a job related to future goals. How to combine they could just keep law going. and creative studies. On and on. But yeah. They look good. All right, I'm going to go back to you now again for a few minutes. I'm going to write a few more. Now I'm going to ask you, what's stopping you from finding a career? Well, right now, um, I'm involving to myself on campus. So right now, I'm involving to myself on campus. That doesn't allow me to have a career. Okay, so how to limit? <laughs> how would you like to state that? Yeah. Okay, so how to prioritize what? My future. Is um, it now you were you were talking about different things you're involved in. So mm -hmm. do you want to state it that way? How to prioritize the, the activities activities then, involved yeah. in? And then you just said another one too, so we'll put that. So what was the other one that she just said? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> your future goal your future yeah. or something. How to prioritize your future. This is where process buddy can be very helpful. You back off of it. <laughs> Let me ask you again, what else is stopping you from finding a career? Um, figuring out if I actually want to take a year off before law school, so like if I do go to law school, will that affect me having a career? If I go, like, go to law school you know, next year instead of taking a year off? Okay. So in what ways might I make a decision Yes. about? About either a career or law school. She's like bringing a lot of things out at once, so you right. kind of have to decipher what to immediately focus on there. And sometimes it's more than one question. Yeah, she really has a lot she's thinking about. She can't easily put them into how-tos. Do you want them to generate a few for you? Sure. What else might be stopping her from finding a career? Write it, say it, we'll put it up. How to, how might I, what ways I, might I? Do I need experience before I become a lawyer? Like, you go right to law school, then invitation. Yep. How to, how might I, or in what ways might I? Um, so the process buddy told her, put it in a how to. How to combine law school and a career. How to find out if I need experience before I become a lawyer. How to learn more about different careers. How to research careers. And again, you can see just how trained this resource group is. Very fluid. Um, how to work in a law office to see if it's what you really want long term. How to fail a career before law school. How to multitask between law school and the STEMs, career. invitational STEMs are on there for each one. Facilitator doesn't need to remind them. How are we doing for you? I just need to, I think that's good. Good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Any last ones you have? Um, how to prioritize your needs and desires. How to not let law school limit your options now. How to find a career that will help me. So you want to acknowledge the group and any of them that they're working on, put them so, on. So you haven't had a chance to look at these. You'll be able to look them over on your own. But just uh, at top of mind, looking at it, um, is it still this statement? Or do you see some other things that might be worth exploring further? Yeah, I see other things, especially the one that you just said. Um, how to, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was so memorable. <laughs> The thought of going to law school limit your options right now because you're still very young. Yeah, I think that's like one of my main okay. hurdles is that one. All right. So let's keep going with this and but kind of debrief it, and let's see what we did because this is a useful one to keep continue to to um, uh, think about and work on. So. Uh, how to find a career is what she started with, and you know with clients often they might come up with something and you're going, mm, not sure if this is a good one to, to really you know, move into idea generating on. But you want a tool that can, can help clarify that. So this, this can, can do that. Let's start with, first of all, what happened with the way that 
I did the tool. There's a couple steps that happened that I want to get your input into this as well. Did it in the most simplest form to begin with. That is, the statement is here. As a facilitator, I have to change the statement because I'm not asking her how to find a career, right? I'm asking her why do you want to find a career. So that takes us up the ladder of abstraction, which makes things broader. You ask the why question, it makes it broader. What I did was how to find a career. Why do you want to find a career? She answered it. Then we changed it into a how-to. So I did it very, very slowly. And I write them because I then have control over how they're stated. So I model it stated appropriately, and then eventually I can let a group go and write them down because then they, I'm not having to re-explain how to state it. I've already seen it modeling. I kept going, do you notice I kept going back to the same one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why else? Why else? Why else? That's in the simplest form. Then when we go down, again, we have to change the statement. What's stopping you? Why? What's stopping you? So what's stopping me takes me down the ladder of abstraction to more concrete. Did the same thing. Asked it. She said it. We restated it. We put it up. I asked it again, the same one. And we put it down. By the time the group is already ready, they're all like, Help. You know, you kind of feel that, and she's yeah. she's had her sense. She's done some things, so we we made it a little more complex. We let it get a little more complicated, which is fine. Uh, and you're also a trained group, so I might keep control of the. Anytime I, as a facilitator, have control of the marker, then I have control of how things are stated, and I'm always watching to make sure and reconfirm with her how it's stated is how she wants it, so we can help her. But then I'm always going back, is this, does it, is this what you're talking about? So I can guide a bit, but the guiding is only to help her clarify what she's doing. What else did you notice? It gets harder and harder every time you think of, like, what stopped me? Oh, my God, I don't know. Like, why? I'm like, because I just want it. Right. <laughs> That's what I do want to say, but... Yeah, yeah, it just gets hard. Some people say it's like therapy. You gotta keep it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why else? But you have to stretch. Yeah, and that's where the group input is. Was that useful to you? Let me yeah, ask you. No, it was because when I stopped thinking. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, so you get stuck, mm -hmm. but then you have the benefit of this group to come in some different directions. Yeah. What else did you notice? Um, it looks into maybe different parts that you haven't considered before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it going to help you? It, it's sort of like therapy because you... you it changed her challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually have some different directions here. And it doesn't mean she has to pick one. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that might we might utilize this. Mm -hmm. Anything else you noticed? I feel like the why um why was stopping I mean the what's stopping you part is like more useful than the why right now mm -hmm. because it like really dig more deeper. Okay, why? Why is that the case? Mm -hmm. Anybody take a guess as to why the what's stopping you was more useful? Because it was such a big challenge. To it was already with. high on, on, on the um, ladder of abstraction. Mm -hmm. So I could as a facilitator, and I do as a I wanted to model both ways. Um, but if I have, you know, what do you want? I want to live a richer, fuller life. How to live a richer, fuller life? I don't need to ask why. They're already at the top of the ladder of abstraction. Just ask what's stopping and go down. I don't need to go up and down. You know, this is often something you might do in a client meeting. And so you take it to where it needs to go. You don't have to go up and down. A lot of times we do. However, if I know, I can tell where I am as far as abstraction, and I may go up less and spend a lot more time down if needed, or, or the other way around. You know, how to tie my shoe on Tuesday. First of all, it's not a good problem statement, but you know, it's so concrete that I have nowhere to go but up to take it up a level. So as a, as a skilled facilitator, you begin to analyze those statements immediately as to how, how, where they are on a letter of abstraction. Now there's another way to do this. You know the other way to do this? Okay. Mm -hmm. We could do a web, yeah. Um, so there's a, and let me give you a simple one that takes it um, 
uh, it does the same thing as a web basically, but what I can do is how to find a career. Why do you want to find a career? To get a job in the real world. Uh, and actually this one doesn't get to do web. This will take me, let me re restate this. There is a way in which I can go up and down the ladder of abstraction quicker. So, how to find a career. Oh, um, why do you want to find a career? To get a job in the real world. I'm going to ask you another one. Why do you want a job in the real world? Yeah. All right. How to be grown up? <laughs> See how quick she got up the ladder of abstraction. Why do you want to grow up? <laughs> because you, you get older. You can't go back the other way around. Okay. So <laughs> how to just grow older? Right. I can very quickly go up by instead of coming back to this one every time, to go to the one that was just generated. Let me show you again. Going down. How to find a career. What's stopping you from finding a career? Um, I need to prioritize my activities. So how to prioritize activities I'm involved in. What's stopping you from prioritizing your activities? Um, I'm involved in these activities for the next year as I graduate. Okay. So um, how to fulfill the commitments you've made till mm -hmm. you graduate? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so how to fulfill the commitments you made to you graduate. What's stopping you from fulfilling those commitments? Nothing. Nothing, right? Okay. <laughs> Oops, we're stuck. <laughs> All right, so you can see I can go back and forth. I can, if I want to go down quickly, I can, I can do it that way. I can, I can go a couple times. So the, the webbing gets at going sideways. So um, uh, let me find one up here. How to get a job in the real world. Why do you want to get a job in the real world? You give me an answer. Why else do you want a job in the real world? So I could stay here for a little while. And then I could take one of those and I could go off of that one. Best to model it simple to start with. Yes. It's as complicated as a facilitator because it isn't, there are steps that you have to take mentally. And there are steps that the, the client has to take or you have to coach the client to go from whatever the answer is to something with an appropriate invitational step. That's why you can see I've mostly done how-to because it tends to be the simplest for people to do. And that's what we wanted to model, simplest. I actually didn't know you could do that with a team. I thought it was just like the client and the, facil mm -hmm. the facilitator sitting down together trying to mm -hmm. make it. Mm -hmm. Hugely yeah. beneficial with a group. Mm -hmm. Now, you've used it often for task analysis process planning. Mm -hmm. But in a session, it can be particularly good. As a matter of fact, one of the ways that we've used it often is that you're in a session, you've confirmed with your client, you have a problem statement, and you start going, and it's just not working. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, I do one of these. Is there, because you can tell by the way they're talking. They're saying, well, I'd like some more ideas around blah, blah, blah. And we don't want it in a discussion. I, I keep putting a process framework around it. So I can say, okay, let me try another tool. And what I'm really doing is backing up and saying, okay, rather than generating ideas, I'm going to take it to the clarifying of this problem statement. And let's go back, and is there a certain direction now that we've, that we've outlined? And you'll get the client a lot further. With that. So some of the other language around this would be challenges. Challenge statements, challenge, challenge statements. questions. Yep. Really large group. I'll split them up into smaller groups, and I'll give each group the same um, starting point and then let them do a web of abstraction. And you will often find that each group finds a different thing to yeah. focus on. Yeah. So they all end nice. up working on the same root yeah. problem, but then taking it in different directions. It's very rich. So that would be particularly good if you are all moving in some broad goal, exactly. uh, but you really want people to explore aspects of it. Yeah. So how do you converge them once you have three different so now we're looking at the complexity of a group application, a clientship. Next, but some, the way I've used it is that if I have a group of eight that are working on one web, then they converge, so they'll do hits on the different challenge statements they've, they've <coughs> created, and they'll pick a challenge statement that they then want to. So now we're getting into the convergence. 
What do you do after the the ladder of abstraction? Identified challenge statement, then you might want to do hits and clusters, and then pick one from there. So. Yeah, you can put all things up and have them work that way. You can have an individual yeah. there, and that's the key thing: is it depends what I want to do next and where I need to go with the group. Yeah, yeah the other thing that. You'll notice in setting this up, the other thing is that you really model this with the client first. So when working with a group, you really need to be deliberate about showing them how the tool works. So why do you want a career? You took her answer, you restated. And you did that a couple of times before you opened it up to the group. Really important to model it because for an untrained group, they'll get lost if they don't see the sequence. Start with the, the, the challenge question, the challenge statement, why, get the answer, and then show how to rephrase it. And it's often helpful before you even start this tool to at least give a bit of training around it because it is difficult to mi take that mind shift, especially if you're not used to stating challenges with invitational steps. Absolutely. Again, the importance of a warm-up of some sort. So in this case, maybe doing a warm-up that really gets them into creating how-to statements, um, other challenges. And sometimes we'll even do a warm-up uh, around kind of an out-of-context challenge to, to teach why what's stopping you.